Greetings, friends of our Blessed Lady. Our previous reflections described appointments adorning the Virgo Potent's altar in our central shrine. The front mosaics and the striking statue of Our Lady of Grace portray the three apparitions of Mary to St. Catherine Labore. Last week, we described the symbolism of the pelican that adorns the door to the tabernacle. Today, we take a closer look at two other symbols that appear above the tabernacle doors, a host flanked by two peacocks. As we shall see, there is a very strong connection between these two symbols. Peacocks often appear in early Christian art as a symbol of the resurrection and eternal life. There are various levels of meaning to this symbolism of peacocks. The ancients believed that the peacock's flesh never decayed. St. Augustine refers to this in his classic work, The City of God. In chapter 4, he gives examples from nature that prove that bodies may remain unconsumed and alive in fire. One example he cites is the peacock. He asks, For who but God, the creator of all things, has given to the flesh of the peacock its antiseptic property? Augustine goes on to describe an experience he had after dining on peacock. He says, And after a slice of the peacock, had been laid by for thirty days and more, it was still in the same state. And a year after, the same still, except that it was a little more shriveled and drier. No wonder, then, that Christians saw the peacock as a symbol of eternal life. In medieval times, it was also thought that peacocks shed their feathers every year, and the new ones that grow are more beautiful than the older ones. Along with this idea, medieval legends included the theory that the gorgeous colors of the peacock feathers came from a special diet. It was believed that peacocks could kill and eat poisonous snakes. They ingested the poison, transforming it into the colors of their feathers. Thus, people viewed the peacock as an apt symbol of Christ's resurrection, since, as St. Paul states in 2 Corinthians, Christ became sin for us on the cross, but then rose from the dead with his glorified body and wounds having conquered the power of evil. One recent commentator adds this symbolism. During a normal day, peacocks are fairly ordinary looking, and yet, while all the while they're pecking and clucking like very average birds, a hidden splendor lies underneath. The symbolism applies analogously to Christian life. When we see a Christian walking along the street next to someone who has never been baptized, we usually cannot tell the difference. Our interior splendor as followers of Christ will only become fully visible when we enter into eternal life and come to share fully in Christ's own glorious resurrection. At that point, the hidden magnificence of each Christian soul will be revealed to the wonderment of all, similar to a sudden splendor revealed whenever the peacock spreads its magnificent feathers. The peacock also symbolizes the cosmos, the spray of its ornate feathers has many eyes, suggesting the vault of heaven dotted by the sun, moon, and stars. The peacocks in our mosaic above the tabernacle, then, portray the resurrected and eternal Christ, the one who will never die again, the Lord of the cosmos, Christ who is embodied in the consecrated host flanked by the peacocks. The Eucharistic Christ is the source of our eternal life. All of us believers already possess life in Christ. However, the full splendor of Christ's glory remains hidden. The full glory of God within us has yet to be revealed in the life to come. 
The consecrated host represents the real presence of Christ. In John's Gospel, Jesus proclaimed, I am the bread of life. Whoever eats this bread will live forever. The blessed host and the peacocks speak of resplendent eternal life. Our prayer this week celebrates eternal life in the body and blood of Christ. Let us pray. Lord Jesus, we praise and thank you for shedding your precious blood to wash away our sins. Continue in this world to nourish us with your sacred body and blood, so we might eventually come to enjoy eternal life in heaven, where all shall celebrate the glory you share with us, Father, Son, Holy Spirit, and all the angels and saints, forever and ever. Amen. Next week, we'll discuss the final images that adorn the Virgo Potent's altar in our central shrine, namely the silver mosaic replicas of the miraculous metal. Thank you, dear friends, for your patronage, and especially for your devotion to Mary. May you always remain close to our Blessed Lady. O Mary, conceived without sin, pray for us who have recourse to you.